Praise the Lord this day. My name is Ian Kiyama and I'm a member of the youth. And uh, today I'll be sharing with you the midweek message. And uh, today the tables have been turned. I'm used to being behind this camera. And uh, um, I would like to thank the communication committee for always standing by me and uh, together as we do these productions that we do for this church. And uh, we thank the Lord for that. I thank Elder Jane, who is our patron, Tony Kariri, who is our chair, and uh, the rest of the crew, which includes Olivia, Enoch, James, Wisdom, Obed, and Brian. I thank the Lord for you guys. Also, I'd also like to thank my parents for supporting me through this journey and uh, even during this time and for always standing by me. I'd also like to thank the parish minister, uh, Reverend Festus Gitonga, whom we've been working together ever since this season of Corona started. And uh, I thank the Lord for him and for also um, for God for enabling him to and uh, this platform to share the word of God with you. And uh, today's message is uh, the peace of God in. Um, let us pray. Our Father and our Lord, we come before you this day. Um, we thank you for this chance. We thank you for this time that you have enabled us to hear the word of the Lord. Um, we thank you. And I pray, Lord, that this uh, word that um, I'm about to share shall reach um, everyone, not only in this church, but also in this world. Use me as your vessel um, to reach your word to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today's, uh, the title of today's message is The Peace of God Within. Um, what is peace? Um, peace is uh, known as the situation where there's no war, where there's no violence, um, a situation where there's calm, there's not a lot of uh, unrest. And also, some people will say it's a state of being quiet. You know, there's, no, there's not a lot of, uh, um, there's not a lot of noise happening um, around us. And uh, the reading for today will come from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, from verse 6 to 9. And it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts, your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, Put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. We, we have heard from the word of God that do not be anxious about anything. Here we are told, is also another way I would say that we should, have, we should have and seek peace. So um, for me, there's a difference between peace and comfort. So comfort is a way of being relaxed. But comfort does not necessarily, it will not always come from God. Because also the devil can bring in comfort by satisfying some of the desires that we have, which, some, which most of the time leads us to sin. But peace, when there is peace, there is no war. There is calm. And when you, and you, we find most of the time, I know some of the, most of the time when we sin, the, the, we, we, we are not calm. We are not always calm. 
and we are not always relaxed. So for me, peace is acknowledging the following. It is a, peace is acknowledging P, E, A, C, and E. P is purpose. E is existence. A is awareness. C is control. And E is eternity. So now let, we can be, let's begin with purpose. Now purpose is, a, purpose is meant to create an impact which produces a certain result. So um, let me begin with us. Let, let me say this with a story. Um, sometime last year, I was uh, doing a, a particular unit at school because I'm still in school. Uh, I'm set to graduate next year. And uh, there was this particular class I was in. And I was very passionate about this class. It's called broadcast journalism. And along the way, I was very, I was not at peace. I was torn in between this class that had a lot of work and another class that was a bit hectic, uh, but it had less work. So most of the time, um, I would find myself complaining of how much pressure I am feeling. And I was not at peace. Even when uh, sometimes I would just tell my mom, hey, this class, it is hectic. Uh, this, the, this is the way I'm expecting this class to go. But it is not going the way um, that I expected it to be. See, in my heart, I knew I had purpose. And <laughs> there was a purpose for this situation that I was in. So what did I do? I felt at peace as I wrote a letter to my lecturer and also to my parent, um, apologizing to them uh, for dropping out of this class. It was three months into the semester and I had dropped out of this class. But inside me, I knew I had peace. After I sent that letter, I felt peace, at peace. Because in this situation, I knew there was a purpose. And the purpose was, I was not ready for this class. <laughs> I was not ready for this class. And as the year went, I, get, I got to know why I did not take that class. And it's the same case for us. We are in situations where we, do, we are not very sure and we are not at peace because we are in this situation, but we do not know what is the way ahead. But as soon as you seek the peace of God, because we have been told not to be anxious and to present our requests to God, then your answers, your answer will come through and it will create an impact in you and you will see the result, not now, but even in the future. For me, it had, for me this purpose uh, was achieved this year. And let, we go to the next point, which is existence. Now, um, even in this process of acquiring this peace, we have to acknowledge that there is a process. Um, before even we got to this war, there was a process. There was a calculated move for a war to be planned and to create chaos within a certain situation or a country. And this process of making this war is what created the uh, solutions to this peace. Because the causes of this war, um, the solutions are made while you are trying to make this peace. Some of us um, do not acknowledge the fact that there is uh, the fact that there is war and that there is peace. So it even becomes is it even becomes harder for us to be to know to realize, which is the next point, awareness, which is to realize. Awareness is like to realize that something is happening around you. So even in awareness, it become, if you do not, if you fail to exist, uh, to acknowledge the existence of peace and of war, then you will not be aware. And the, this awareness in our spiritual walk of life, um, it happens in three phases. It happens in the physical, it happens in the mental, and even in the spiritual. So you find out that you will not be able to identify whether you are in peace or 
in a turmoil because you fail to notice what is happening in the physical. Say you may be anxious. Say because anxiety causes a number of things. Headaches, loss of appetite. Uh, for example, for me, sometimes I got to that point where I lost appetite. Um, even in our mental state, we, 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 we stop, we fail, we feel like we cannot move, we cannot move further in or do our day-to-day -day jobs. And, and many of us suffer from that. That is why there's a lot of talk about uh, mental awareness. And even in the spiritual realm, there's usually a lot that happens that makes us to be, um, to be um, not to be at peace. Because you remember even uh, Saul, though he didn't have a lot of peace. He didn't have peace because there was a lot happening in the, spirit, in the spiritual realm that he was not calm. So uh, David was called so that he could, play, he, he could play the harp for him and he was now calm. So if, if you, when you get the purpose, it means you acknowledge the existence and when you acknowledge the existence, then you are able to be aware of what is happening around you. Peace, another thing for you is that it, you acknowledge control. Um, when, when it comes to the, um, the police who ensure that there is law and order, you can imagine a situation when there is no peace, um, when there is no police. Then there will be no peace because there will be no one to maintain that um, law and order. And in this case, um, God is in control. When, when you acknowledge that God is in control, then you realize that you will always, always be at peace. A lot of the times, you know, if for the communication committee, you know, they bear me witness. And a lot has happened while we are, set, while we are trying to set up for the live stream um, services that we do every Sunday. A lot has happened. Sometimes, you know, a technical hitch happens, but we always acknowledge that um, God is in control, and eventually he comes through to us. A number of times, when those technical hitches happen, I mean, a friend of mine called Enoch, we always say, hey, man, God to watch You know, there was a video, <laughs> there was a video that um, was trending some time back of a prayer that was done in Sheng, now, how are just the way they knew. Yeah. It translates to just do the way you do. <laughs> just to do the way you do. Because um, just like Jesus, um, just like when Jesus was uh, going to pray that when he uh, sweat, when he sweat blood, he said, nothing, uh, nothing is impossible with you. That's what he told God, because nothing is impossible with him. We trust God, and we acknowledge that God is always in, in control. And there's a verse here in 2 Corinthians um, chapter 12, verse 9 to 10, which is, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will, not, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. That verse is already self-explanatory because God shows up. In the, li in the list of times, when you, do not, when you least expect, that is when God shows up. And because you acknowledge that God is always in control, then you will always be at peace. And when God is in control, then we are in the journey to eternity. And in John chapter 16, verse 33, um, you know, this was the time, this was the, time that the disciples that had already walked with Jesus and it was uh, during the, the Last Supper, and he was kind of signing off and telling them, now you will not see me anymore. And, but do not worry, because in verse 33 he says, I told you these things so that in me you may have peace. 
in this world. Um, uh, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. In the journey of, it, it, when we get to this journey of eternity, you know, um, a lot happens because this journey, <laughs> the, the journey of Christianity is not as easy. Because when, most of the time, you know, people expect that it's going to be a smooth journey, you know, when you find Christ, but a lot happens. Just, just by looking at the life of Christ, a lot had already happened, Yani. And because it was, it was smooth sailing at first, now until he started now encountering the rejection, denial, betrayal, and even when he was, even when he was rejected and put on the cross, um, there were still people who accepted, accepted him as Christ because they found peace in him. And it's not to say that there will not be trouble. There will always be trouble. It, it will happen physically. It will happen mentally. And it will happen spiritually. But when we find the peace of God, it becomes very easy. That's why I said, when you acknowledge God's control, then everything, every, you, you, will, you will not even worry about much that happens. Because even... Um, people have been persecuted. They have been stoned to death. Look at even the house, the, 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 the other disciples died. I, they went through the most painful experiences I have ever seen. And because in this world, a lot ha has happened. And people are chasing clout. Clout is, okay, <laughs> I know the youth relate to this, but clout is like power and influence. Many people find, many, many people try to find peace in many things. In this world, it may, may, maybe could be indulging in some, some, thing, some things like drugs and be in the effort to try and find peace and get the, to withdraw themselves from <laughs> the chaos or the unrest of this world. But there's only one source of peace. There's only once, once, one place where you will find peace that transcends all understanding. People wonder why you are so calm always. It's because you will have found peace in Christ. Because in the life of Christ, there was purpose. Remember in Isaiah 9, he was called the Prince of Peace. Because Christ had purpose. And he later came to existence. And now we are aware of his presence. And because God was in control, we are now in the journey to eternity. And how, are we, and how can we find this peace? It is by prayer. It is by reading the word of God. It is by listening carefully. Remember, Mchungaji told us about the different voices that we hear in this world. There's a lot of, there are a lot of voices. In communication terms, we call them noises. There are a lot of noises. Spiritual noises, mental noises, and even physical noises that happens around us. Because we have to be spiritually attentive. That is what sets our foundations. And the benefits of this is that you always be in the correct path, in the right path. You know that feeling of, mm, this is a sweet deal, but uh, I won't take this route. I'll take this route. The route that, the route that, is, le that is not always taken by everyone. And you will not worry about anything because you will have already found confidence in God. When you find confidence in God, it means you acknowledge God is in control because there is a purpose and there is a reason why it exists and you will become aware and you will get to eternity. Now I'd like to tell the youth that are out there, let us find the peace of God. I know there's a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot that happens in our world. You know, social media, you know, people, you want to live like somebody because, uh, 
because of what you see on their social media. But most of it is not of God's. Let us find the peace of God. I, I, I usually like to say, like, just be you. Just be you. Don't try to be like somebody else because your only competition is yourself. And, 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 and when you get to heaven, it's about yourself. It's not about anyone else. You know, even, even when um, <laughs> we are always anxious, especially for us, the youth, about, you know, finding the right partner, the right spouse. Uh, and because there's always a lot of demand, you know, because for us men, you know, mademo nataka, mademo nataka maisha inaka hivi, mademo nataka hivi. You know, even a friend of mine was asking me, no, I had a fight with someone else. I had a fight, I had a fight with someone I am seeing. But anyway, Ian, what do men what do men want in us women? But I told her, until you find the peace of God, and you will always be at peace. You know, I've always, I've also been in such a situation until I I I I found the peace of God. And I just asked God, eh, me in this situation, then I, I, at least I will know how to handle this situation. And I found God's answer through that person that I, was, I thought was the one or that I wanted to be with. So let us find the peace of God because there are so, this is a cloud-chasing race. It's a cloud-chasing race. So let us find our peace in God. Let us follow Christ just like the way the disciples did. And they, fi and they finally found the peace of God. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, um, we come before you again this day, um, thanking you for this word that you have uh, shared with us, Lord. And Lord, I pray for everyone, for everyone um, who has heard this message. And even those who are yet to hear this message, Lord, that they may find your peace, that they may find your presence, Lord. Because it is the only way we can be close to you, Lord, and we can listen and hear from all the noises that happen around us, Lord. We pray for your peace. We pray for your guidance, Lord. And even for our youth and even for, the, uh, for our parents, Lord, even in the moves that they make, Lord, we pray that you may always glorify your holy name, Lord. We pray um, that, that even, I pray especially for the youth in this country, Lord, that social media will not always be their standard, that they may always find your, stand, your standards in you and only in you, Lord, and not in nothing less, Lord. We pray for your, um, for your country, Lord, that we may always seek your face, that you may always be at peace, that even, even the, with all of this noise that is happening with even our politicians and even other leaderships, Lord, we pray that your peace will be with us, Lord. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen. Thank you for listening to me and for listening to God's word. May he be your peace. And may the peace of God be with you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>